Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. This video is going to show you how to effectively use the Upgrade World mod. Now, don't think of this as a regular mod that you need to play the game. It doesn't work like that. These mods allow you to create a Valheim experience for people that has respawning dungeons and all sorts of other creative things to keep the game more engaging. Once you understand how this mod works, it gives anybody interested in more long-term Valheim experiences many, many more options. We'll start by resetting all of the crypts. We're going to use this command here, locations, reset, crypt 2, crypt 1, crypt 3, crypt 4. This crypt is one of these crypts. I don't remember which one, so that's why I'm just resetting all of them. And then you'll see a pretty typical progress bar, which will eventually get to 100%. Let's see what happened. And what we can see is that the dungeon rotated a bit. It used to be facing towards me here. Now it's facing over here. And the mobs have respawned, even though they were already killed. And if I go inside the dungeon, I'll find that it's a totally new dungeon, different layout with new mobs and re-rolled treasure. Oh. Resetting locations using this mod is a very quick process. It's not the same for metals, which we're about to get into. But before we get into the metal, let's make sure that you understand how the force and player base mechanic works with Upgrade World Mod. To better illustrate what happens here, I've set up this to show you. We have a location that's about to be reset, and it has a designated amount of wool that's going to get destroyed. You can see that each increment up top is about 4 meters in-game. So going to the right from the center, we have 4, 8, 12, and then 16 to the right, and also 16 to the left, for a total of 32 meters. Let's run this force reset command and watch exactly what happens. Boom. You see, just in the blink of an eye, that whole area vanishes and replaces the location with a brand new one oriented in a different direction. And you can see that the radius that gets destroyed is 12 meters roughly from the center of this particular location. But keep in mind, certain locations will destroy more or less based on their size. However, this forcing of the reset isn't always going to be ideal, and that's why there is a player base mechanism built in. As you saw in the command I used earlier, I added this force parameter at the very end. But if we get rid of this, it'll change the reset so that the reset avoids any location that's close to what is considered a player base, which is basically a workbench. Now I've placed a workbench here, effectively making this a player base. We're going to run this command, but without the force parameter. Going to go start, and then watch the whole command go through. And there we go, all of the locations were reset, but as you can see, this location was not reset because of the presence of the workbench. And now, really, which command you use is up to your own personal preference for how you're running the server. If you always listen to the player base setting, it's going to result in a lot of these dungeons that are close to the center and used not getting reset because somebody put one workbench next to it. So I find that it's more effective to force reset the dungeons. That being said, these little ruin things and the little huts that people come across they're really frequently used as bases, so I don't recommend that you force reset these locations. These should probably be soft reset. And as I showed earlier, a soft reset is just a normal reset without the force parameter. It's going to avoid anything that has a workbench nearby. However, when you run the command with the force parameter, it doesn't care at all about workbenches. As you saw there, just vanished in the blink of an eye, workbench or not. You have a solid sense of how the location resets work, what they do, how the force mechanic works, and when to use it or not use it, depending on how intense you want these resets to be. The only thing you need now is all of the location IDs. I showed you just ones for the crypt, 
But Valheim has loads and loads and loads of different locations that it generates. You can also find it in the description of this video. This will allow you to reset any location in the entire game, even the starting temple. Now that you have a solid sense of how to reset any of the locations, and you know where to get the location IDs from the list of every single one in the game, well, you're ready to go on to the metal and the ore, because this is a little bit different, but basically the same premise. You're going to use Upgrade World mod, ore is considered vegetation, so you need to start with vegetation underscore reset. We need to reset the metal, but it's not that simple because think about it. Let's say a copper node just spawned here. Well, now you have this giant cavity with a copper node in it. Many people will want to just totally reset the terrain as well. So I'm going to show you how to do both. The commands you're going to be using are vegetation, reset, and then the ID of the mineral. Copper is rock4 underscore copper. Tin is mine rock underscore tin. Obsidian is mine rock underscore obsidian. And then silver breaks the trend with just silver vein. Now, if I were to run this command, it would look at everything, delete all of the copper, the tin, the obsidian, and the silver, and then replace it with a new one, rotated a little bit differently. However, it would do nothing to the terrain and if somebody left a workbench near the mine or the pit, then it's just going to totally ignore that. So normally, I would actually force reset these things. And we also need to add a terrain command. The terrain command will vary by the metal that you're using. You wouldn't normally reset them all with the same one, but if you do, it would need to be kind of big, maybe terrain 20 or even terrain 30, because some of these copper nodes really mess up a lot of terrain. And then after terrain, you would type force. This would be the command to totally reset by force every metal node that has been taken in the game. It will get replaced exactly where it was, but maybe rotated a little bit differently. And it'll also reset all of the terrain around. The catch here is that these commands take significantly longer than the location reset commands because there's so much more vegetation than there are locations. So I'm not actually going to run this command in particular. So instead, we're just going to look at the copper to reset it without doing the terrain change. And then I'll reset it afterwards with the terrain change to show you what it looks like. Let's run the command to reset all of the copper. But remember, we're going to force reset this. So make sure to include the force parameter. Here we go. It'll always remove the vegetation really, really quickly. But then afterwards, as you can see, I'm still at 0%, 1%. It takes much longer than resetting the locations. So this is an important thing to know. And one other thing to keep in mind with the vegetation, it's always good to move your character into an area that doesn't have any of the rocks or the minerals that you're trying to replace and do the operations from there and wait for the operations to finish and get to 100%. And eventually it will all finish and you're going to notice the game will be super laggy now. It'll be fixed just by saving and quitting Valheim and then reloading it. It'll be totally normal. But before we do that, there's one more command that is probably good to use every now and then. It's world clean. Okay. And you're going to save your world. Normally Valheim will just save anyway when you quit. But it's always good to save and wait until you see this last save thing and then you get that message in the top left and then you know for sure you're good to go. And then you can just quit Valheim. And as you can see, now the frame rate is back to normal. And that's typical with the mod. After you run any kind of command, it puts the game into this kind of weird state where you need to leave and come back. So just turn Valheim off and turn it back on and then you should be good. So now we'll go visit that copper node. So here's the copper node being spawned without the terrain being totally reset. You can see how it makes these kind of little valleys where the players previously dug it out. 
And sometimes I, I find this to make like an interesting circumstance and it makes the copper nodes more obvious. But if you wanna to just totally reset the terrain, you can just make that number 30. Terrain equals 30 and then it'll be fine. In fact, it'll look more like this. This is what'll happen if you reset the node and you also use that terrain equals 30 command. It'll reshape the whole area to its default height and paint, as you can see. You can take it a lot further than what I showed you in this video. And if you wanna get your own dedicated server or support my work, then consider checking out Zap Hosting and using the link JP Valheim. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.